will read the pre I will read the preamble. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video or recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And so we'll take a roll call of attendance. Um, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. Doug. Here. Kelly. Here. Dylan. Here. And I am here, so we are four here with one absent. And the first thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Anyone? Um, if you are here for public comment, please raise your hand or signal by pressing the hand button at the bottom of the, the your screen. And no one is doing that. So we're done with public yeah. comment. Sorry, oh, sorry. I, I do see if I was muted. I do see one. Oh, one hand? Yes. Okay. This is general public comment, not related to anything on the agenda. And that's Mr. Rasib. Rasib. Hello. Welcome. Mr. Rasib. Yeah. Can you, oh. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. So, sorry about that. You know, um, I guess this is about the agenda, but this is my first one at one of these things. So I, I just wanted to know how it goes. I believe there's a hearing for an outdoor permit here. So I'm expected to be to to speak at that time. Is that is that how it is? Excuse yes. my um, okay. That, that's Got correct. it. Your temporary outdoor dining application, Bistro 63. Yeah, exactly. And I was just wondering, is there a time that's going to happen? Um, or it just it's a it's a sort of depends on how long everything else takes. Actually, you know, you know, you are uh, next on our agenda. So um, why don't we just move from public comment into licenses and under consideration is a temporary outdoor dining application for license for Bistro 63 Monkey Bar Incorporated 63 North Pleasant Street. And um, Steve, did you have anything to say about this? Or this is just a um, so this is another uh, outdoor dining application um, for Bistro 63. It'll be, uh, I believe, identical to how it was last year. Um, I did note there was um, some live music mentioned in the application, but the applicant does not currently have a live entertainment license, so they would need to apply for that before okay. um, before they could do that part of it. But everything else should be in order. Okay, great. Thank you. Did everyone get a chance to look at the paperwork? And does anyone have any questions? Yes, Doug. I mean, I think the general question I have is just, you know, uh, Steve had indicated, and, and, and maybe Mr. Rippey can can address this. Just, you know, uh, are the hours of operation kind of like what we had last year? It's a similar space, similar, you know, uh, management plan is what you're intending to do, and and uh, you know, is there anything really different from how you operated last year? uh in this outdoor space uh nothing nothing different um uh, i i think we requested a smaller space this year because our covered deck um has full capacity again so we anticipate most of most of our guests wanted to sit out there um and uh you know sa same hours the live music um we're hoping to be like uh, an acoustic musician once a week um you know, it's all dinner, um, dinner and lunch hours uh, during the summer for us anyway. Um, nothing different besides a smaller space. Great. Yes, Doug. Just to just to follow up, you know, anything from last year that you had that, you know, that you experienced that will, you know, uh, re require you to make some slight changes or, or did everything run pretty smoothly last year? I'm just sort of curious about your experience last year and whether that's modifying anything for your operation this year. Yeah, everything was very, very smooth. Um, you know, I think it's a very ge generous thing that the town does. We're, we are very grateful that it's happening again. 
um, you know, minus uh, adjusting for the type of furniture that's out, out there exposed to the um, elements, um, everything will be exactly, exactly the same. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments? Or anything, anything i um i have yes. one thing um i just wanted to bring up and this is not anything that's in any kind of um, official criteria um really just something i wanted to bring up for discussion is something i noticed um with the uh the site last year and the year before is that um it's kind of just a consequence of where the business is located um but with the canvas um screening up above the uh, jersey barriers um there i did notice that the sight lines for the crosswalk um that goes across from that location to CVS were a bit obstructed. And um, sometimes if you were trying to cross a street, you'd have to kind of pop your head up. And as a, as a driver, um, you'd kind of have to be, be careful because there wasn't much of a sight line um, for people coming out in the crosswalk. Um, and so I, I just kind of wanted to just bring that up as this discussion idea. And Ross, if I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, um, but it did strike me as something that, that could potentially be a little bit hazardous. Yeah, um, if I may, I think, um, you know, if, if the police can provide um, a, a sort of an additional, like a watch out for pedestrian sign that could potentially go up on the barriers, um, I definitely hear what you're saying. We are walking across to that CV. I think um, that could be uh, that could be really helpful. And it, it, uh, I think it will be a good thing if, if it's possible to get something like that. You, so, Steve, are you talking about that's don't we isn't there one in the middle of the street already or no? I think there is. Yeah, um, my, my observation was just that um, with the, the, you know, Bistro 63 put up some um, kind of canvas screening above the Jersey barriers, which I do think was a nice aesthetic touch. But um, it did kind of restrict the sight lines for for people of um, of average height um, trying to see around as they walk out in the street. Oh, you mean stepping off the, the curb? On yeah, the, the pavement. OK. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, and there is a there is a something in the middle of the street. I, 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 think, I think there is. Yeah. 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 Sometimes okay. they get hit by cars and disappear. But yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we could. Doug. Yes. I was just going to suggest we might reach out to. I was just looking at the the application. We don't have the we don't have a, a place for the uh, police chief to to sign off, but it it might work. In this case, in particular, because it's so close to the crosswalk, um, it, it might be worth checking in with him as, as, his, as his thoughts about how he might remediate a little bit. Because I think it's it's a safety question. I don't know that's a burden that the that you know uh, Bistro 63 necessarily needs to bear, unless we certainly not this year because we don't have anything regulation wise in place for that. But I think, um, uh, but certainly get some some feedback from the police would be uh, helpful. And if and if there was um, you know some signage that could be uh, set up that'd be great too yeah. if, if i may add, add something um I, I know that you know we we put up these uh uh i think it's like burlap so that the dining area is a little bit more um appealing to guests um uh however i've also seen um uh, the other areas that are uh set up on the uh same street just a little bit of antonio's and i think uh the uh arigato in the past what would happen is that um, even, even though they didn't have the same visual obstruction, people sitting there would proceed to cross the street instead of going back on the sidewalk. Um, so I think, you know, while considering this, maybe some sort of signage on all the Jersey barriers is something that could be helpful because, you know, uh, yeah, just there's a bike lane uh, when there's no Jersey barriers, cars crossing and humans crossing cars have a minute to see the people at least get out get onto the street. What's happening here uh, in both in both instances is that people are crossing the Jersey barriers and are instantly in the way of the cars and for a speeding car um, and, and maybe for an un, unattentive human, they may not have time to avoid each other. Right, right, oh, okay. So it's not just at your spot. Um, I don't know, is it worth asking someone from the police to come in and talk to us about it or do we just send an email how do we get kelly i, mean, I would suggest we send an email because i don't think we're okay. not going to grant a license right 
based on that, but it right. is something oh, yeah. worth asking kind of just in how they feel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. An email to police. Okay. All right. So we can work on that. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, any other questions? General concerns, Steve? Anything I else? have nothing else. Nope. Okay. If there's nothing else, um, is there a motion to approve the temporary or dying application for these two six three? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Allie. Aye. And I vote aye. It is four to zero with one absent. Um, the temporary outdoor dining license for Pisto 63 Monkey Bar is approved. Thank you very much for coming in, Mr. Rafik, and uh, hope everything goes well this summer. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. Oh, thanks. Bye. Okay. So the next one is the special short term alcohol serving license um, application SST 22 33. Hannah Rechtstaffen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hi. For June 4th. Welcome. Yes. Thank so, you all so much for convening this. I really oh, appreciate it. Um, you're welcome. So, um, so you are having something on this weekend? Yes. Two, three, two days. Yes. <laughs> okay. So this is at the Mill District? It is at the Mill District in North Amherst. Yep. Okay. It is a Amherst Pride, Amherst First Pride event. Which is very exciting. Okay. Um, and what's helpful? I can give an overview of the whole event, or just the portion as it pertains to the license we're seeking. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've not done this before. Either. Oh yeah, sure. Why don't you just give an overview, and then sure. um, describe if there's anything we'll have questions for you. Absolutely. So um, on Saturday the fourth, uh, it's the first day of uh, two days of celebrating, um, and we have a pop-up market from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then a um, Pride After Dark drag show from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And what we're seeking um, is to have uh, an outdoor uh, drinks garden um, fenced off in an area where you can watch the show from there. But if you are consuming alcohol, you will have to stay within the fenced perimeter. Um, and that will be available from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and so we have uh, all of our uh, servers who will be overseeing that space. We have five TIP certified servers. Um, and then myself, I will be checking IDs and giving wrist bracelets um, at the entrance of the fenced space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and everything closes down at 10 p.m. We do because we're in um, North Square in the Mill District in North Amherst. There is um, noise restrictions. So we do, um, when we have events up here, we do shut down in a very timely manner. So it won't be something that just sort of continues on um, after 10 p.m. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is there, do anyone have any questions for Hannah? Yes, Helly. What is that anticipated age range for the After Dark event for the, um, the show? Is it, you know, families or is it more for adults or? You know? I think we are sort of trending it a little bit more towards adults. We do have four local drag performers. Um, they all ask the same question, <laughs> kind of who's going to be in the audience. I'm anticipating that we're going to see the crowd um, gear a little bit more towards the 17 to 85 age, age range um, at that point. Um, all of the performers are cognizant that there might still be children around. The earlier part of the day does include a lot of children's activities. So if people want to hang out with their kids and watch the show and be a part of the whole thing, they are more than welcome. Um, and it is one of the reasons that we set the drinking area away from the performance area rather than just having it all be sort of blended together. Um, and also to be able to strictly control who is in the drinking area and not allow any alcohol beverages to leave that area. Um, oh, Doug, yeah. did you have a question? Oh, thanks. 
No. Um, great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? And so you've got the you sent a map, right? I did, and I yeah. should mention too that we will have food available. Oh, great! As okay. well, yes. That is yeah. one of our one of our concerns is that there will be yes, definitely for the duration of alcohol service. Yeah, we have two food vendors on site, and then we will also have signage pointing out that people can walk right down the road to the Harp, which will also be open um, for dinner until eleven, and then um, Amherst House of Pizza is also in walking distance as well. Okay, great. Um, super. Thank you. Any other yeah. questions for Hannah? If not, is there a motion to approve? What is it? SST 22-33. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent and the license is approved. Thank you awesome. so much for coming in and good luck with your uh, program. Thank you your so session. much. Hope to see you all this weekend. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you, Hannah. I will uh, issue that for you tonight. Um, and just on the food note, I spoke to yeah. Susan Malone, the health inspector, earlier today. And um, she was a bit unclear on what kind of vendors might be there. So it might be worth sending her an email reaching out on that. Oh yeah, we've been in touch. Okay, yeah. great. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, Thank she's you. been working directly with vendors, but we have some new new folks who need some handholding, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Bye. Steve. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so discussion items. So rental registration program, and I think that was Gaston was supposed to be putting a letter or something together for the CRC, but he's not here. So we'll move on to the next one, which is lunch cart regulations. And what I sent you, I don't know if you have time to look at it. So there's a draft of the lunch cart regulations that I've been working on. And then um, you have, where there is a copy of the old regulations from um, the select board days, which uh, I guess Steve got a couple of inquiries last time about maybe bringing more lunch carts into town. And since we hadn't approved, what the lunch cart regulations that we've been working on. We just wanted to see if what we have is fine for potential lunch carts in case they happen to turn up in the next couple of weeks. So I don't know. What I, I haven't made a whole lot of changes. Um, I think I uh, did put in under, I think it was authority that the um, town council had approved the Board of License Commissioners having jurisdiction over the public way in certain areas um, so that we can grant without having to go to the town council um, lunch cart parking in non-designated lunch cart spaces if the, everything looks good. And I did have something in the new ones about um, lunch carts being like X number of feet from brick and mortar establishments, but I hadn't figured out exactly how close they were, what that X number was going to be. So um, I'm still looking into that. So I don't know, do we need to, yes, Doug? Just a couple of things. First, um, okay. the simplest thing. Uh, in section nine under hours of operation, in yeah. the last line, uh -huh. the word R, A-R-E is spelled A-T-E. So I think, you know, spell check's not gonna find it. So. It's just, I, I believe it's supposed to be when they are not open and not operating. Um, I think oh, did you, I spell it eight? Okay. Yeah. A-T-E, sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I think the other thing I would suggest, I mean, just, you know, um, the, the, you have, you have a section in on, on, uh, on short-term licenses and the potential of, of a short-term alcohol or wine malt license. Mm -hmm. I think we want to be careful with that because okay. the, uh, there's no open containers except we're allowed, you know, on the on the common, uh, and that's only by. Steve may have to remind us what it, I, I think it's only in conjunction with events that allow for it. I don't think it. We didn't just suddenly allow open containers. I think what we what they what the uh, oh, right. okay. All right. would allow us to you know make the common and open you know basically. The enclosed space for the for the event would be like the common. Okay. And so there's open containers. So I think that's one of the questions around that I had just in looking at that section 
okay. was it implies that you could you could basically um you know in and, and and i don't know if you yeah so short term we may want to define what that is a little more precise about how long that is oh i see with the yeah okay it, which is different than seasonal because i wouldn't want somebody to say oh well, i'll get a license you know it's not a seasonal, so it's six months, it's, you know, a month, but they do a month and, and, you know, have a liquor license that sort of is 30 days, a short term liquor license, 30 days, and suddenly we've got an alcohol, you know, uh, open container alcohol situation. I think that'll also get a lot of negative pushback from the brick and mortar businesses. So right. I think that's the section I, I think we might need to look at a little more closely. And if we're, if, if we're going to, I think the thinking was, like if there is an event on the common and someone wanted a short-term license for that event. So, um, and also a lunch cart license at the same time, we, we may just need to tie those together with the, the duration and the, and the enclosed spaces available and some of that sort of stuff that, right. that make it clear that these sort of, these two licenses sit on top of each other, both physically and, 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 uh, and functionally. So if I just renamed that like an event license, is I mean, I think short, short term is probably fine because that's what we call yeah. the, the liquor license. I think right. let's, you know, maybe define and maybe it's up in the definition section what we mean by that and, oh, and how restrictive or not we want to be because we may want to be more restrictive with with that than than what the state allows under short term license. You know, and we've done, um, you know, like we did with with. Um, you know, if you mask where we, you know, sort of under one application, multiple repeated um, uh, event dates, you know, like every Thursday, Friday, Saturday for you know, eight weeks in a row or something, you know, we, we did sort of under the, 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 the single license granting. Okay. Um, we can still do that here. I just think we want to be um, you know, sort of conscientious of, of, a maximum number of perhaps days, maximum number of continuous days. Okay. As opposed to total number of days, because we might have a thing where like it's a, yeah, somebody wants to set up and, and we're okay with them setting up, um, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for July and August. So it's, you know, eight weeks mm -hmm. and it's only three days and it's only, you know, four hours. And, you know, that might all work in a way. I, I can't imagine the circumstance, but I just, that might fall under like a single license instead of having to get eight licenses. Right. Um, although we could be, you know, generate some revenue by making it eight licenses. I don't know. I mean, I just, those are the kind of things I think about, you know, versus, oh, it's a weekend event like the, you know, somebody wants to do a, uh, at the, at the fair, they, you know, on in late August, they want to have, you know, a taco bar and beer, you know, kind of thing. Um, that's a, you know, that's a sort of classically short-term three-day kind of deal. So, I just think we want to frame it properly so there's no confusion about how those would work, especially if there's going to be an alcohol license right. intersecting with it. And so you think this couldn't be handled by defining short term and tying it? Yeah, up. I mean, I think we and we may need to have discussions about what what we mean by that, and and we may okay. revisit our our conversations about our our short term alcohol licenses. Okay. Because um, somebody could obviously want to do a short term license um, just to serve food too. You know, right. and I think that kind of falls a little bit into the category that that we were just discussing at the the bright event. Right. It sounds like they're going to try to have sort of food trucks. And it's like that technically should fall under this license. Um, oh right, it should. You know, but but obviously they have to jump the hoops with the with you know the the inspectors. Um, but I think that that's you know uh, a consideration. You know, it's like, do we want to license those things? It's an unusual location, um, you know. I don't think the uh, and I'd have to reread the old policy. I just kind of skimmed it, but I don't think it talked about a short-term license. It talked more about a seasonal or a or, or a full-year license. So, yes, I think okay. the idea of a short-term license is not a bad thing. Um, but I think we want to just you know, a tied in with our our liquor license thing if we want to allow for people to serve alcohol at the same time, and then. Okay. You know, have it uh, interfere with the existing uh, food inspection and that sort of stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. I think for this particular event, it wouldn't apply because it's on private property, but I could uh, definitely imagine a very similar event happening um, 
in a town parking lot or something so or the commons so okay okay yeah if we wanted to hire 10 food trucks and set up in the high school parking lot they ask exactly. the schools if it's okay mm -hmm. still kind of a public space certainly mattoon street's public you know it's you know it gets it gets um ill-defined and that's not a good place to be okay all right Dylan. um so yeah i got a question about the the x number of feet around uh uh lunch carts being providing notice to abutters being uh abutters being uh residents or just just other restaurants um and this is I, go ahead i know oh, i think they're both i think um i don't think it's an issue with us the spaces we've already designated but let's say somebody wants to do a i don't know go somewhere in south amherst and put a food truck down on the street and for whatever reason and then someone's going to have it just to let somebody know, like outside your house, like there's going to be a food truck. So I don't know if that's necessary, but if you, you know. No, I mean, I think, I think that makes sense. Um, but this is just for short term that we would be doing uh, on a butter's notice? Um, I don't know. Did I not put it in locations outside i guess i only have it in for short term i think i pulled that in from another town's regulations to be honest and didn't and kind of work it all the way through and that's only and we're only looking to do a butter's notices when it's uh something outside of the designated these are the lunch cart ones so if somebody wanted to say do it in a parking spot that isn't one that we've like designated that's the case what we're thinking we would want to notify butters Am I right about uh, that? That's the general thinking? I think so. I mean, I don't think, do, do they don't, in the past we haven't, they, they haven't done an abutters notice for the, the standard, the, the designated parking spots that we have listed in the regulations. But, um, oh, say Doug and then Holly. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I think that, you know, um, especially if we're considering a new location that's not on the list, you know, we get the list prescribed within the regs. Anytime I think we're considering a new location, then whether it be, you know, an annual, a, a seasonal, or a short-term license, mm -hmm. um, then in a butter's notice, you know, in advance of our hearing the 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 application, so there's got to be a little lead time for them to to get the notice to people and have them be able to to come and speak to their circumstance. Because, like, you know, like you said, it's like if somebody wants to set up a seasonal thing in front of somebody's house, yeah, you know, the homeowner may object. It may be a great spot. It may create traffic things that that the, you know like police doesn't care about but the homeowner does we want to know that you know we want to give them a chance to sort of make their case we may still be okay with the with the license i just think it's it's fair to include it on all those but particularly in the cases with with a new location for sure okay all right thanks Kelly. i mean i was going to say the same thing that if you're providing notice with that to me it goes hand in hand a chance for people being provided notice to be heard on what's happening and so i would also then put even if they're you know if it's a beyond seasonal or even if it's a seasonal thing you know somebody might not have a problem to start with but then all of a sudden it might be oh gosh they're you know operating loudly there's rodents or who knows what so some sort of review or at least way for people who are been provided notice to complain about mm -hmm. the food trucks location. Right. Yeah, definitely. So I just it's just a matter of figuring out how far we want can the area to be around the food truck. I don't I, know. Um, yeah, I was gonna say we could do uh, I know what we do at the zoning board of appeals. I think it's I want to say it's 200 feet is the abutter. I know it's two weeks ahead of time. Two, oh, right, okay. You notified, they must be notified two weeks before the meeting. And then it's either 100, 200, or 300. I never remember. I want to say it's 200. Um, and you just notify those people. And we could just, just use that. That's, I believe there's um, like a legal rationale of why the Zoning Board of Appeals uses it. Not saying that we have to use it here, but it might be a good one to use. Um, it's a good place to start. Uh, is two weeks enough? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Doug. I was going to say, I think the question is is is, is a useful question. Um, it, what what I would also suggest maybe review as a as a as a 
framework, if nothing else for the language, is that also with a brand new all alcohol license, there's a, uh, a requirement. I mean, they require like certified letters to be to the abutters. You know, and you have to like, when you show up at the hearing, they have to show up with the little receipt cards and all that sort of stuff. I don't know if we want to go that far, but certainly that language that's in our, our alcohol regs might be oh, okay. might be valuable and, and it gives some timelines and some of that sort of stuff that okay. might be helpful for framing the, the language of it which is probably very parallel to what what dylan's talking about in the, in the zba okay that one might be 500 feet with alcohol licenses okay we may decide that's a that's too big a radius um you know 500 feet's a tenth of a mile that's basically a city block standard sort of block that's a pretty big space for a lunch cart um for an alcohol license that's you know, if you live on the block with the with the new alcohol license, that's you want to know. Right. Um, but that's just to give you a kind of frame of reference as far as distances. So, okay. Um, Good to know. I also think that that you know some of this, the bid and the chamber might also have some interesting feedback relative to um, not so much the notification, but but you know um, you know what their members think around. Uh, in, in a general sense, it might inform our, our decision making about new locations. They may have some some things that we haven't thought about that they think about relative to um, you know impacts on on brick and mortar businesses and uh, you know and again they might just I mean if we provide it as advice and we can take it as as that it, it it wouldn't necessarily alter what we do or what we allow but I think certainly when we're considering new locations it's a thing to to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we may not need to formalize it into regulation. Some of that, like, you know, if we have a general rule of thumb, it's like, all right, well, you want to be a little further, you know, you want to be away from a brick and mortar food business, perhaps, except in some special, you know, if it's in, it may make a difference as to whether it's a seasonal slash annual versus a short term. Short term, we may be more willing to allow them to be closer because mm -hmm. um, it's just for like a weekend kind of thing, as opposed to, you know, uh, Something's going to be there for five months. You know, right. the impact on a, on a brick and mortar business a lot greater when they're there every day. Um, so anyway, just some thoughts. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I also think uh, with the five hundred feet for alcohol, is that we're only concerned about that if they're going to be serving alcohol. If they're just a food truck that's not serving alcohol, we want to impose that restriction of five hundred feet. But I, I found that it's it's three hundred feet. Um, in mass general law for an abutter. Okay. Uh, we could use that as our, our standard. I think that might be a little big, but uh, could also be fine 300 feet when you actually walk it. And I know it's being much shorter than I, I, I think it would be. Right. Um, the uh, other one I actually had a, a, a thought on here was uh, I think it's what section 12, mm -hmm. uh, lunch carts may not play loud music or use any kind of sound amplification to attract customers. Uh, would that apply to something like an ice cream truck? Would they not be able to play their their jingle? I don't. I don't. Well, they don't stop. I mean, they don't really. They don't like. They're not parked anywhere. You know. So do we? We don't license those. They just kind of. But if, if somebody wanted to have something similar, like a like a jingle, right. Um, would we, would we not allow it? Because I was thinking we might want to just put in like some sort of language, like in, unless reviewed by the board and approved by the board or something like that. So we could, because I definitely agree. I don't I don't like the idea of a, of a lunch cart coming and blaring music all day. That sounds like a nightmare. Or even uh, a turkey in the straw all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, I, I think what happens with uh, with like an ice cream truck is they often play it when they're driving and then when they stop, they turn it off. Yeah. Uh, and that could be a thing we could do too, is that if we had okay. a circumstance that, you know, where it's like, well, once you're stationary, you don't get a, to do any amplified, you know, music or, or anything, but okay. but it might be something worth considering, considering, you know, some flexibility there. Cause it might be a thing where just to announce, you know, if, if they're taking orders and they're like number 35 and you come get your, you know, your uh, your order that can be helpful to have that kind of an amplification so right okay so section 11 let me look at that okay yeah it says actually how you have a phrase is interesting because you have any sound amplification to attract customers 
that would allow for, um, you know, theoretically sound amplification for, you know, business functionality, but also potentially for uh, entertainment for existing customers. You know, that would be, you know, that's what it becomes. It, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, the, the uh, music right. for, while you're dining kind of thing. Right. So that's that's not been explicitly ruled out, but. Not, okay. Has anyone ever been to a lunch cart that has music for entertainment? No? Okay. I think right. if I have, it was a radio for the people working, not. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that kind of thing. That's a different thing. Okay. Uh -huh. So, all right. So I have the a butter's notice feet, how much time is required for notification, um, music, stationary lunch carts, and the tie in with the liquor license within to the short term into the short-term liquor license. Um, that's great. Okay, and then bid and chamber of commerce. Super. So, well, that's great. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Just one thing about the bid and chamber. You know, I mean, the the simple response you're going to get is no, we don't want them, right? Um, right. <laughs> but if they can articulate more specifically the kinds of burdens they impose or or problems that they cause. Whether it's sort of, you know, oh, they take foot traffic away from us, or they block the view to our business, or right. you know, those kind of things. You know, obviously, it's a competitive market, so they're going to take some business. That's understandable. But if there are particular things that are problematic, then that might give us some good indication about, oh, well, maybe we don't want to put, um, you know, a place. You know, like one of the places that's allowed is is on the sidewalk. Um, I think right next to the uh, to the. Um, it's the Bank of America. Mm -hmm. That's literally right next to Orient, you know, the the uh, a Chinese restaurant right there at the at that corner mm -hmm. of that building. You know, that's that's tough. I mean, you know, if you're going to set up your food stand right next to somebody who's got to pay rent and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, um, anyway. So I think it, specific feedback from them would be much more helpful. I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. specific feedback. All right, great. Thank you. So in the meantime, um, thanks for all your input. Um, are the ones that we have sufficient to, in case a lunch cart does come into town? I mean, I mean, I would like to get these approved a little more quickly as soon as possible, but I guess we can work with what we have. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, I mean, we so, could, um, the ones that we have are still controlling. And um, I mean, if we, if we feel like um, we're ready to move forward, and I think this is a, a very strong draft, I mean, we could try to have, um, you know, one more round of board feedback at the next meeting and then right. send it to the okay. lawyer and approve it at the one after that. Okay, that would be good. Yeah, neither of the two that uh, that had reached out to me is for permanent, permanent lunch cards seem to be that um, they didn't seem to follow up, so. Oh, they didn't. Okay, well, that's... Um... That's good, I guess. It gives us more time. So I'll have um, work on a draft for next time, and uh, we can have another discussion and maybe run it by the, uh, the lawyer. And hopefully at the time after that, we can have it approved. All right, great. Um, OK. So moving on, our last item for discussion is the letter to establishments. And Helly, this came up last time. Helly, I think this was your idea. So Dylan, you've uh, we got a um, ABCC uh, went into Hazel's Blue Lagoon. Steve, do you want to tell Dylan, give him the rundown of what happened? Yeah, there was a um, ABCC report that was uh, received by their, uh, you know, su submitted to. Well, I received a copy of it. It was pr produced by their investigators, and they were doing a compliance check as they routinely do. And they went to Hazel's Blue Lagoon and they found um, the doors were locked. Um, they knocked on the doors and had trouble getting anybody's attention. But finally, a bouncer came out and um, asked who they were. And they said they're investigators and um, there was some kind of altercation. The bouncer asked if they had a problem and pushed the uh, pushed the investigator away when he tried to walk in. And eventually they were able to make access and um, it appeared that everybody there was very young, 
and um, they carded, I don't know how many people they carded, but they carded six people who were underage, and one of them yeah. testified that, oh, this place is well known um, for you know everybody underage to come here. So um, the ABCC oh. has parallel jurisdiction, so they're holding their own hearing. Um, it's a bit of an open question what we can do for violations they find. I'm not sure if um, there's something the board can can do additional um, sanctions or, or not, but um, but the, regardless, their hearing will be on um, the 14th of this month. So in the meantime, I think um, I think what is a good I think I am going to try to get to that hearing on the 14th. It's a video conferencing or phone conferencing. There's a number and then a PIN code that you put in. And I think, Steve, you said you're interested in going too. Yeah. I think what I'd like to do is just hold off on pulling them in for a conversation until after, sometime later after the hearing. Um, I'd like to, Steve, I do think it's good. Uh, I think we talked about this last time to talk to the lawyer and find out if there's like what our responsibilities are and any overlapping jurisdiction, which I don't know if there is with the ABCC. I think that question is a good one. And in the meantime, um, I was thinking just of a, a letter to all establishments in town, um, reminding them that even though the students are gone, it's probably, you know, please be on the lookout for underage drinkers, um, that kind of thing. So um, that's what I think might be a good thing to do. Does anyone else? I think they're, um, I think just pulling them in for a conversation, I think it's a little, might be a little premature yet. And um, just to see what, what how, it, how it all plays out on the state level. Do we, um, do we know what time that meeting is? I want to add it to my calendar. I think it's, um, it's at noon. Noon on the 14th. Got it. I am pretty sure, Dylan, during the last meeting, I forwarded the email along to the whole board. Um, and I would have copied you on that if, if I did. So you might, might find it if you dig back. But if not, I can send the whole email I got to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve. OK. So I will, um, Steve, I'll work on, Steve and I, we can work on that letter and yes. um, look it over the next time at our next meeting, which will be after the hearing. OK, great. So we have, and then there was, um, Oh, the police email too. We have email to the police about that crossing in front of yes. the um, monkey bar. Monkey bar is green letter to establishment. Okay, great. Um, anything else on this one? If not, um, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Any topics unanticipated? Okay. Um, review of minutes. Do we have minutes today? Not today. No. Okay. All right. Anything else? Oh, our next meeting is Thursday. Dylan, last time we decided to move to Thursday, back to Thursday at five. Yep. Um, right. Okay. Yep. And the 16th, I guess, would be our next one. Yeah, the 16th at five o'clock is our next meeting. Wonderful. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, I will, is there a motion to adjourn? moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Um, let's take a vote. Doug. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 544 p.m. Um, thanks, everybody. See you on the 16th at five. Good night. All. all right. Bye. Before you leave, can I have you stay on for two seconds? I just have a question about uh, reappointment. Me? Yeah. Only. Yeah. Uh,